Okay, so everything has dried, so the next thing that we are going to do is uh, stain everything. And while this, uh, or actually, the moment I got my dye out and everything else, I realized that I was missing the retention strap. Always happens every time I get to shoot a video on a tutorial, I always space something off and overlook something. So. I'm going to go ahead and dye this since I've already got everything out and uh, while it's drying I will cut a retention strap and show that to you as well. Um, obviously I'm not going to need to show you how to make or cut that strap. Um, you're just cutting a strap. So let's go ahead and dye this thing up. Don't be stingy with your dye. Yeah, it's kind of expensive, but you want quality and you want it to look good, you can't be stingy. Another thing I notice a lot of people doing is they don't stain the inside of the sheath. Now I I completely understand that um, no one's going to see it or the inside and everything else, but I take pride in all of my work, and if I know that I have somebody that's going to look down inside this sheath cover one day and see that I didn't stain the inside, it just, quite frankly, just looks like I kind of you know, for better words, half-assed it. I just don't want that. Now I've covered this in my past videos. That first coat that you put on is not going to look good. Okay, it's going to take several coats. I mean, as you can see, it dries kind of splotchy see that with each coat that I do, you know, it starts to look better and better. It's just got to penetrate and soak all the way in. That's definitely one of the important things of what I was talking about with don't be stingy with your dye. Do a thorough job. poorly stained sheath can actually make it, or excuse me, a stained job can make or break your product. Typically three coats will do it. But at the end of that third coat, just take a quick look and make sure you're happy with it. I mean, nothing's to say that even after this dries, if you're not happy, you can go back and add another coat. But usually three coats will do it.
for good measure, we'll go ahead and do another coat. Now, when you let this dry, don't just lay it down. If you lay this down, it's going to dry with a dark ring around it and everything else. Let me show you a trick of what I do. Basically, this is all I do right here. I just get an old wire hanger, and then I just hang this up, let that air circulate around it, and it'll dry nice and even. Okay, so I had mentioned that I had forgotten to cut out the retention strap. So I went ahead and did so, and I finished it off, uh, dyed it, burnished it, and everything else. And you can see it's a nice finished strap now. It has a nice dark brown finish to it and everything else. And uh, basically I'm going to show you how to achieve that nice finished look now with this because as you can see it looks ugly okay there's a nice residue on it and everything else same with our loop first thing you're going to do is grab you a piece of scrap wool you can use a uh, you know cotton towel or um, paper towel or something like that but basically all you're gonna do is you're just gonna polish this up a little bit okay now you're gonna want to press against the table and do it vigorously but if I was to do that here well it's gonna shake the camera all over the place so I'm gonna pick it up in my hand and I'm gonna scrub it just a little bit and you can see just by doing that it takes off that ugly residue and you're gonna be left with a nice shine and that's just step one so I'm gonna go through I'll polish both of these down and I'll get back with you in just a minute. Okay, and once we feel like we've got a nice polished finish and everything else, got all the residue off and everything, we're going to be working on the inside of this. Well, since we wet formed this, well, not necessarily wet formed it, but since we submerged it and everything else and dried it and put our finish on it, you know, it's kind of dried the leather out just a little bit. So at this stage in the game, I kind of like to put some of my vitamins and nutrients and everything else back into my leather. So I'm going to take the, uh, the Abernoffs, Abernoffs, however you pronounce this, this stuff. I don't remember how you pronounce it. You've probably figured out by now that I'm horrible with names. But anyway, this is by far the best leather conditioner I've ever found. Smells amazing. You actually just want to eat the dang stuff. But uh, we're going to just get a very little bit. I mean, a little bit of this stuff goes a long ways. I mean, when you apply this to your leather, it just melts, melts in. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing stuff. And that's what we're going to do. We're just going to work in a couple coats on the top surface. We're not going to put any on the underside at the moment, just the top surface. First time you use this stuff, you'll be amazed at just how it melts right into the leather. And I mean, the leather just drinks this stuff. I mean, just soaks it up. And you can see that that leather is darkening up. Gives it a real nice, deep, dark brown. You know, and then once it soaks into the leather, this will lighten back up a little bit. But be aware, I mean, the first, when you put this stuff on, it will permanently darken your leather just a little bit, okay? But it will dry out, and your leather will return to its natural color eventually.
And the beautiful thing with this stuff, as you can see, that it's already just soaked right into the leather. So now we can go back and buff it out. Get a nice dark, deep brown. And you can see that my strap, it is lighter than this, okay? That's because this set overnight after this was applied. It's had time to soak in and dry out. Like I said, once this dries out, it won't, um, I guess I misworded myself, it won't ever return exactly how it used to be but it will be very close to its original color but once it dries out. So I'm going to go through and apply several coats of this stuff on all my leather just to, just to put the vitamins and everything else back into it, especially on this top side where I'm going to be bending it open and everything else. Alright, so everything has had a chance to dry and everything has had a chance to really soak in and we are definitely left with a nice dark rich color. Now before I move on to putting the snap in and um, fastening the retention strap on I'm going to take my welt and I'm actually going to place it inside of my sheath or cover whatever you want to call it and I'm actually going to make a mark for my glue line. So I'm going to hold that there make a mark just like that. See that line? That will let me know where I'm going to glue as well as where to stop when I apply my finish on the inside here. And I am going to go ahead and do that on this side as well. Just like that. Now we are going to seal up the flesh side to where it looks like that. So we're going to grab this right here. I've said it in my past videos, I will not try to pronounce it because I will butcher it. Basically all we're going to do is just open this up Now you do not want to apply this stuff in the area that you plan on putting glue Otherwise your glue will not stick finger and really rub it in. And then you can take, you know, a slicker or something like that and really work it in. Now that would be very smooth now. And will look quite nice when we're all done.
Now, while we're at it, and we have this stuff out, we're going to go ahead and apply just a little bit to our burnished spots, and we're going to go ahead and touch those areas up. Because even though we went ahead and did that earlier, by doing the wet forming, you know, it's kind of opened up those hairy spots and everything else. So we're just going to go in, give it a quick once over to lay everything down. And this stuff does a great job of laying everything down and making it stay down. And just like before, you want it to feel very smooth. And if you want your edges to be black, then you're going to go ahead and want to um, apply your black dye on the edges first. Um, I went ahead and did that, by the way, because I wanted my edges to be black. can see. Mm -hmm. Alright, so you can see that everything looks nice and finished now. All the edges look smooth, the flesh side nice and laid down, the color looks fabulous. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to apply a top coat to keep this from bleeding. Now, with the, um, with the leather conditioner on there, it's not going to bleed that bad, but as a preventative, we are still going to go ahead and put that on just to uh, ensure that it doesn't bleed at all. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're just going to open this thing up, lay it down flat, and before we get too carried away, you can see a little bit of excess wax build up. We're going to rub that out, maybe. And I'm just going to use a regular old paper, paper towel on this. Simple as that. Do that to all parts of my sheath. Let them dry. Keep on rolling. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put on the first side of our snap. Which is this piece here. And our post. I also hope you're enjoying the cartoons in the background. So we're going to take our post, stick it through. Take our snap, we're going to put it on. Now we're going to press down. That way if there's any leather popping up, that has now you know, been pushed back down into place. this on a hard flat surface. Now when we start hammering this we're going to kind of work it around in a circle and then follow it up straight up and down. Just like 
that. And as you can see, it has made a nice crimp. And you can probably also hear the dog going ape shit crazy in the background. Alright, so now we are going to put on our retention strap. Now what we're going to use for this are these copper rivets here. Now these copper rivets come in different lengths. I always get the longer ones because no matter the length size they're all the same price. So I get the long ones just in case I need that extra length. So we're going to again just come up through the bottom. Slide our strap on. Now that it's aligned, I'm going to go ahead and push one of these back out and do it one at a time. And I forgot my tool. Let me grab it. Now for this one, you're not going to use a mallet, but you're just going to actually use a regular old hammer. Snap it into place just like that. Now these things are very strong, okay? These are not like regular old cap rivets. These things are very strong. Take a pair of wire cutters. And we're going to snip that off just like that, okay? Then on our tool, you can see that little dome section. We're going to put that dome section over that cut. That's going to dome that over. Now after we dome it over, we're going to again take our hammer flatten it out just like that then obviously we're going to repeat that process with the uh, the second one and then we'll right, so now on. it is time to go ahead and glue this thing shut now you can use multiple different glues okay this is what I use and the reason I use this is because it sets up very fast goes on you know really easy doesn't make a mess or anything else but like I said there's multiple things you can use people use rubber cement um, my buddy Jason from JDO leather um, you know he first introduced me to uh, wood glue and I'll use wood glue if I'm using or if I'm doing it on a very large project or something like that but um, most of the time I just stick with this stuff here All you're going to need is a Q-tip. And keep in mind, we made lines on the inside to show where we glue. And something else we're going to do before we get carried away here is we are going to um, <clears throat> take our smooth side here and we are actually going to rough it up. Way to give the uh, glue something to adhere to. And something else we're going to do is I'm going to grab my knife. We're going to put the welt <coughs> on the inside here, and uh, you'll notice that there's going to be a little bit of overhang. Okay, not a big deal. We're just going to trim that little bit of overhang off before we glue it. Grab my knife real quick. Set 
that in here. Allow enough for a little bit of a weep hole or something along them lines. Make ourselves a mark across it. And now we know where to cut. in here just to make sure that we're happy with where we cut it. Hope you guys are enjoying the commentary in the background. Let's just stop and listen for a second. This could be interesting. I'm talking about cats and dogs and Oh, okay. The kid has made some projects, and she made a flower for Maya, a cat for Mom, and a knife for Dad. Oh, Dad. What? The, the, the dogs for Maya, and, and the cats for the lady who gave Mommy the honey, and then the knife for you, and the... Okay. Okay, the flowers first. For my, and the flowers for my mom. Okay. Well, thank you. All right, now let Daddy... Hey, be real quiet. Daddy's got to finish making this, okay? <clears throat> Here, please don't do that. Okay, so that's a good... good Baby, please leave that alone. Kaylee. Oh, five-year-olds. Okay. So we've got it trimmed up. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and glue it. Now I have found that the uh, kind of the thinner you put this stuff on, ultimately it's kind of the it's kind of better. Now with um, <clears throat> contact cement, rubber cement, or anything like that, when you do this, you kind of have to let them sit for, you know, a good 10 minutes before you can even really bond them together. This stuff um, just doesn't take near as long unless you uh, get it a little bit too thick, like what I just did there. So we'll just try our best to smooth it out just a little bit. So you can already see that this side is tacky, not sticky, okay? When you touch it, if your finger sticks to it, that's not what you want. You want it to be tacky to the touch. This, this one here, still a little sticky. So we're going to set that or let that sit for just a few more minutes. I'm sure it's probably good at this point, so let's go ahead and put her in. Now, with contact cement or a contact adhesive, the moment you put a lot of pressure on it, that's where it's going to stay. I mean, it can be ripped off, but it's not going to look pretty. So, I mean, you want to line it up gently. And once you're happy with it, then go ahead and press down. A lot of people will take their rubber mallet and kind of pound it down a little bit as well. Um, I've never really noticed a difference be honest with you if I pound it down or if I just give it a good squeeze 
but um, now I mean, we can just go ahead and continue on. Always be um, aware that you get your glue on the edges, okay? Definitely want to make sure you get your edge good. You don't want that popping open, opening up on you. Okay. That stuff, like I said, sets up pretty good and fast as long as uh, you put it on thin. So now we're going to line it up. And we're going to take a couple pieces of scrap leather, put these on either or both sides of our cover, and put some clamps on it. <clears throat> now you're going to want to have the scrap pieces of leather when you do this. If not, these clamps will mark your leather and then marks will not come out. Okay, so it's all glued up. We're going to set that aside. Now, that glue, believe it or not, you know, within, oh, 20, 40 minutes, you can actually start moving on to the next, you know, next procedure of this, this, whole, this whole thing. But I am actually going to leave it for, you know, about, basically I'm just going to leave it overnight. I mean, I'll start on it tomorrow afternoon or something like that. But, <clears throat> for the time... I've saved this, so I'm going to go ahead and stitch this up, and then I'm going to uh, call it a day, and we will work on this another time.